Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's the Max Nation coming to you guys with a brand new video. And today, I wanted to go over something that a lot of people have been talking about with the Detroit Red Wings as of late, and that is their goaltending. Now, I came across this post a little bit ago um, on Facebook. I believe it was on one of the Red Wings fan sites or whatever. But it has a breakdown of what Detroit's goaltenders are going to look like this year. And you'll, you're, it's on the screen now. You've got Vili Husso, who played 56, 56 games last season with a record of 26, 22, and 7. Goals against of 311 and a save percentage of 896. Then you got James Reimer, who will likely be Detroit's backup. Played 43 games uh, with a 12, 28, and 8 record with 3.48 goals against with an 890 save percentage. And then your third, which is Alex Lyon, will has played played 15 games for the Florida Panthers with a record of 9-4 and 2 with 2.8 goals against with a 9-14 save percentage. And he was a big part of why Detroit got not Detroit of why Florida got into the playoffs. And a lot of people are looking at this, and even on this Red Wings post fan page post that had this image in it, they say that the caption said that, you know, looks like Detroit's goaltending is gonna be a problem or something like that. And a lot of the comments are kind of 50-50. You got a lot of people saying that, you know, it was a down year for a few for a lot of them. And then you've got some other people saying, yeah, I don't know what Eisenman's doing. Or then you got some people saying, you know, there were some people saying that we should have made a trade for Carter Hart or John Gibson or Connor, Connor Hellebuck, you know. And then they were talking and there were some people saying, yeah, but there's a stopgap, stuff like that. And I kind of agree with all of them in a sense that you've got Villa Husa, who is more likely than not going to be Detroit starter. And yes, he has that save percentage of 896, but you got to remember, he played most of the last season injured and post trade deadline, the whole team suffered, meaning Husso's number suffered and it was just a bad time. Huso's 28 years old. I believe he's still got this. Is, I believe he's still got two years left on his contract, two or three. I can't remember if it was a three or four year deal. And he's a solid goaltender. You know, he's been above 900 for most of his career. With St. Louis, when he played, he was a 919. He fell a bit in 2020, but everybody did. Uh, and then, you know, for most of his career, it was an above nine. Uh, it was above 900, and. He showed flashes last season that he can be a really, really solid starter. He made he kept the Red Wings in games that they had no business staying in. So it's very it's very possible and likely that with the stronger blue line that Detroit has now, you know, you'll have Cider Wallman, who's your bona fide first line, as long as you know that's not a one off thing. But we'll get into that well, that's a whole separate video. And then You've got your second pairing, which will likely be probably Ghost of Spare and Sherrod or Ghost of Spare and Hole. Then you got your third pairing, which will be some combination of Mata, Mata Petrie, Mata Sherrod, Mata Hall, stuff like that. So you've got a really solid and NHL-capable blue line to defend him. And not only that, you'll have a healthy Vili Husso going into the season. And you'll have somebody who can back him up like James Reimer. James Reimer, yes. I know there was some controversy with him off the ice about the Pride jersey, warm jersey and shit like that. And I don't care about any of that. My philosophy is when it comes to sports and sports teams, you cannot let real life, you cannot let world politics di dictate what happens. You know, you cannot let that, You can, sure, you can be upset at him. But people were upset that Eiserman signed him because he refused to wear the Pride jersey. And my feelings about that are they don't matter. But the point, the fact of the matter is, Huso needed somebody solid behind him. And Delkovich was too inconsistent. And Helberg was a well, a good goaltender, couldn't handle a rebound to save his fucking life. So James Reimer has a history of... But, uh, He's been above 900 for almost his entire hockey time. Like 2008, 2009 with the Toronto Marlies, he was up, he was below 900. But besides that, last season was the last, first time he was below 900, and that's because the blue line he was behind, their best defenseman was Eric Carlson, and Eric Carlson's not a fucking defenseman. He's a forward posing as a defenseman. So you've got this, like I said, it all, it all comes down to, the, to how strong Detroit's blue line is going to be now. 
I believe Reimer can take the load off of Huso and play 20 to 30 games. I believe it's possible. You know, Huso can play. Huso will likely play the majority of the season. And like I said, competition. I've said this before. A lot of people say before competition breeds excellence and competition breeds performance. So if Huso wants to stay in that starting position, and Reimer wants to stay in that backup position. They both got to perform really well. But say one of them doesn't work out or one of them gets injured, you've got Alex Lyon. Alex Lyon, 30 years old, big, like I said at the beginning of the video, a big, big part of why Florida made it to the playoffs this year. And he's a solid goaltender. He's, you know, he is a backup goaltender. He's not a starter by any means. But he is a solid, he's an above average third string goaltender, essentially. You know, he is an above-average goaltender that you can throw in as a backup in case, say, Reimer gets injured. You throw a lion in there, you don't have to worry too much or really at all about, you know, when your backup goes in because you're playing a back-to-back schedule. You know, we've seen a lot last season where, you know, Huso started one game against, say trying to think of our back-to-backs but let's just say for instance this season they play Pittsburgh back-to-back you're gonna have Huso start that first one likely and then the second one you don't want Huso playing back-to-back games so you're gonna have to throw their your backup in to start well if Reimer's injured and that Lion is there Lion is going to be an upgrade to that backup position from Nedeljkovic and Helberg I love Nedeljkovic. Nedeljkovic could be an elite level goaltender, but he's far too inconsistent. He has far too many confidence issues to be able to con- to continuously fill in that role. You know, part of it is because he got way overplayed when he was a starter for Detroit in the what was it? The twenty well, he was a starter for Detroit before Huso came in, so you know, twenty one, twenty two, but. He was way too overplayed, and he didn't have any sham- he didn't have a shamble of defense in front of him. You know, he didn't have a defense in front of him at all. Cider was the best defenseman in front of him, and that's it. So you've got three NHL-capable goaltenders, which is something Detroit hasn't had in a hot minute. As long as all three of them can stay healthy, or at least two of them can stay healthy and consistent, this is going to be a very good. This is going to be a good season for the Red Wings. Solid, a solid blue line will help them immensely. This consistent goaltending will ease that struggle off of the blue line. Because coming from a defenseman, if your goaltender is not solid in net or confident in net, that puts your whole defensive line on edge. You know, from the first to the third pair to the seventh defenseman, that will put your whole defensive line on edge to where they're going to start playing overly defensive because they don't want to. They don't want to have something happen. To where the uh, your the team you're playing breaks out of the zone, and say it becomes a two on one, you know, you're not going to have your offensive, you're not going to have your offense from your defenseman that you want to produce. So, having stable goaltenders in line will also drastically help your defense line, your blue line, and if your blue line is confident then your forwards are going to be confident. And all of it ties together. As a lot of people say, hockey is a team sport. And if one-third of your team isn't confident, then everybody else is going to be on edge. Everybody else's performance is going to suffer. And it's just going to fall apart. You cannot... It's basically like a chain. You know, the the chain a chain's only as strong as its weakest link. Well, if... Your weakest link is your goaltender because they're not confident or they're shaky in net. Well, then that's going to, like I said, make the defensemen more defensive. They're going to want to protect. They're going to want to keep people from make, from shooting the puck at you, at the, at the goalie. And if your defensemen are more focused on preventing people from shooting the puck, well, then your offense, then your offense, offensemen, offensemen, your offensive lines are going to see that and they're going to be like all right well we don't have the defense we don't have any offense coming from our defensemen you know we don't have any offensive support coming from them we're going to have to do everything on our own and because of that you know it just 
becomes a free for all essentially. You know, it's basically if you're in the offensive zone and your defensemen aren't they don't want to pinch near they don't want to pinch at all because they're afraid if they do something can happen and be a two on one and then your goaltender may or may not save it. You know, your goaltender's there's a good good chance your goaltender's not gonna save it and one defenseman can only handle one guy. So it's they're not going to pinch. They're not going to provide that as good of offense as you want them to, meaning that it's basically going to become a five-on-three in the offensive zone, and your forwards aren't going to be able to do anything. So, like I said, it's a trickle-down effect in, a, in basically a chain. If the weakest link of the chain is your, your chain's only as strong as your weakest link. If your goaltending's weak, everything else ahead is going to suffer and be weak because of that. So, I just wanted to cover this real quick because it's a topic a lot of people talk about, like I said, and a lot of people are criticizing it more than I think they should. Like I said, Reimer had a very down season last year with San Jose because San Jose is a bad team, and their best defenseman was basically a forward posing as a defenseman. You know, Huso suffered later on in the season because of injuries and because of an injury he was playing through. And then, like I said, with when the trade deadline came and went, you know, they had to, the, the whole team suffered. You know, they were basically playing, uh, like, a third of their defensemen were pretty much AHLers. You know, they were basically throwing half of a minor league uh, defensive line at professional defensive lines. With Lyon, he is a very solid third. You know, if he can go, be- if he can get back to the form that allowed him to bring, essentially, to essentially get, Florida into the playoffs, then this is a really solid goalie trio. You know, I believe Reimer can have a comeback year. We've only got him for a year anyway, so if he underperforms, switch him out with Lion. Lion will be a safer bet regardless, I think. And then, you know, like I said, it, it, I think it'll be good. Huso coming in healthy should, and now that he likely won't have to play nearly as many games, he should be solid. Like I said, Lyon will likely always be solid. Reimer, I believe, with a stronger defense in front of him and a better team in general, then I believe in a backup role he will be fine for 20 to 30 games. So that is all I wanted to talk about today, guys. Please let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Detroit's goaltending trio and who you guys think will back up Huso or if you who do you think will start. You know, there are some people who are under the impression that Huso may not be the starter. Because, you know, recency bias is a big thing. Some people think that Lyon will be the starter because of what he did with Florida, getting him into the playoffs, stuff like that. Personally, I think Huso is going to be the starter. It's kind of a done deal at this point. He proved too much last season that he has to be, the, that he pretty much is going to be the starter. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is, as always, the Mexanadian, and I'll talk to you guys later. Adios.